welcome to Complexity Made Simple. My name is Paul Allen and before we get on to today's video just a reminder of how you can support the channel. Please subscribe, please leave comments on all the videos because that really does help but if you want to support the channel uh, further there is a donation page please go to buy me a coffee and leave a donation which is always fantastically helpful keeps the channel keeps the channel moving and allows me to make all of this fresh material but if you want a textbook that contains all the good stuff from the videos please click on the link and buy drink tea and read the paper from lulu.com all of these things really help the channel thank you to all the people that continue to buy this textbook it really is fantastically helpful now let's get on to today's video welcome to the latest video and in this video newsletter what we're going to talk about is something called statistical tolerancing okay so this is a question that i've been asked on a on a video so someone's left a comment on my youtube uh, video um, and it, it was a question about statistical I can't spell it statistical tolerancing and they sort of said what do you think of statistical tolerancing i think so um, now i've got to be honest uh, had i ever heard of this before not really uh, so i looked it up and we're just going to talk i'm not going to talk about what it is and how to calculate it as such we're just going to look at the theory behind statistical tolerance and what it's doing and whether whether you should be using it or whether you shouldn't be using it we'll have a we'll have a little discussion about that so let's talk about what statistical tolerance is it's all about sort of capability it's really telling you what your natural capability or it's trying to tell you what the natural capability of your process might be so in order to get capability you're going to take a sample okay so we go to the process we take a sample i would recommend minimum 30 pieces we're going to assume this is measurable not pass fail okay so you're going to take minimum 30 pieces maybe as many as 50 pieces now what that does is create an estimate so here we go we create a point estimate for your average the center of the process where your process has been set now then it's an estimate that's very important and of course if you want to get super statistical you can then work out confidence intervals as to where you expect the real average to be because of course this thing is a guess it is a point estimate so if you build confidence intervals you might end up with a with a, a window that says look i don't know actually where the real middle of my data set is but i know that it's somewhere inside that green boundary that's a confidence interval now what this thing is doing is building on top of that the distribution so it's now saying well if my center could be there and it could be there of course, if I put my distribution generated by my 30 results, I could have data all the way over here. I could have data all the way over here. And this can never spell statistical this is my statistical tolerance right. it's sort of a boundary where if you add in confidence intervals to the normal distribution you get this extended window and it's saying well you could have data out in those tails because the center that you collected here this thing let's draw the the original distribution in the original distribution might not be sitting there it could be left and right of that position because the center of it is an estimate 
here so so that's what it's doing all right now I don't know do you want to do you want to use this and by the way the the inflation factor that it goes this direction and this direction is driven by this sample size here and they give you a, a, a multiplication factor called K so you put K in there and it drives the results left and right by a certain factor and it tells you how big this this window is going to be so that's kind of what it's doing um, am I a fan of this um, my my view is we're trying to be too clever we're putting we're putting st statistics on top of statistics on top of statistics. We're putting guess on top of guess on top of guess. And for me, you, you're going to run out of room here. This thing's not going to. This thing's not going to fly if you're not careful. The red distribution. It's an estimate of what's going to happen. We've used standard deviation. To, to predict extreme values. Extreme values you haven't collected yet. Okay, so we've already made, we've already created an estimate, we've already made a prediction of what, what we expect to happen as a picture. But if you then also say, I expect the picture to be moving around or it may not be quite where it should be. You're sort of predicting sort of real worst case. This thing is really worst case because to get those green distributions all the way out here, that would be a very rare day at the office. So you are predicting rare event on top of rare event. This thing out here is probably at this point, one in a million, maybe even one in a billion pieces to get a data point out there. Now, do you want to be worrying yourselves about one in a million, one in a billion? Um, usually, most people, when they do this and they create a CPK, they've got this. They've got genuine defects to worry about. Most people, you know, they, they're not worrying about the statistical errors in their, uh, in their sampling plans. They've got real, real world problems. And what they want to know is how do I squeeze this thing in? And how do I get rid of these horrible flipping defect rates that are genuinely sitting right at the tails right now? So I have to say, am I a fan of this? I'm never a fan of over statistically analyzing too much data. Um, I'm, I'm a practical kind of person. Most people are here. Doing all of this nonsense is like, it's like stamping on the ants when you're about to get run over by a herd of elephants, to be honest. Uh, so keep your statistical analysis simple. Look at real world practical problems and fix the real world practical problems and don't give yourself what you consider to be a problem that's so rare if, if that's all you got to worry about in your company man alive you are a fantastic company keep it simple don't go over uh, statistically analyzing and that way you'll make great practical decisions and you'll improve your processes dramatically if you keep it practical